anything you don't pray for, you know, cannot become a reality in your life. So one of the reasons for which we pray is to make certain desires a reality in our life. If you can pray it, then you will see it. If you can tell it to God, then you will share it as a testimony before men. Nothing becomes testimony except they have been mentioned to God in prayers. If you, if you can mention it to God in prayers, then God can bring it down to you as a testimony. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. That means they prayed for them and their prayers for them followed them. Prayer can move. Prayer have the ability to move. When people pray for you, the goodness of their prayers can follow you everywhere you go to. Certain people enjoy certain divine benefits because of some people who are committed to praying for them. There are certain favor you are enjoying now that, it's, that did not come because of your prayer. Many things we are enjoying did not even come on the platform of our prayers. It came on the platform of the consistent prayer of devoted intercessors. Ephesians 1 verse 16 Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Amen. When you speak to other brethren in Christ, especially those people you are praying for, always remind them of the fact that you are praying for them. When people know they are being prayed for, it gives them a kind of confidence, encouragement, and gladness. So when you come across people that you are praying for, tell them, affirm it to them. That is, if you are led to do so, just like this, uh, just like Apostle Paul did here, he said, making mention of you in my prayers. Are you there? So when people know they are being prayed for, it gives them a kind of strength, a kind of synergy to follow God more. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Prayer is a way of watching. Are you there? The way to watch in the spirit is to pray in the spirit. When you pray, you are watching. Every prayer, every, you know, every praying person is a watcher. The weapons of watchers is their ability to pray. Are you there? If we say this is a watcher, then you know, if you if you if you if you have seen a watcher, you have seen a prayer warrior. Because the weapon of every true watcher who is watching in faith is prayer. As a matter of fact, we watch to pray and we pray to watch. Now, we watch to pray because sometimes you need to know what is coming so that you know how to attack with prayers. But some other time we pray to watch because when we pray, we have an idea of what to expect. So, from the prayers, we know what to expect. And the knowledge of what to expect, we guide how we watch. Are you getting what I'm saying? Philippians chapter 1 verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Are you, are you saying that when you pray also, you know, it's not... It's not necessary that you must pray and cry in the process. There's a time you, you pray. There are, there are seasons you pray with joy in your spirit. Yes. When you pray and there is and you experience peace in you, it means the matter or the case has been settled. It means you can go to the next item. Yes. Sometimes when we pray, God uses inner peace to speak to us. 
So when you are praying on a certain matter and you suddenly discovered a, 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 a kind of peace in your spirit, is a sign that that prayer has been settled. That thing you are asking for is settled in the spirit. But if you pray and there is no peace in you and you still feel disturbed, continue praying. It doesn't matter the numbers of hours you have prayed, continue praying. That restlessness in your spirit shows that that case is not yet settled. I hope you understand. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Christ. What does this show us? This tells us that the prayer of others for us can stir up hope in us. Many people are hopeless today, not just because they are not just because they are prayerless, but because there is nobody praying for them. Two things can help you to become hopeful. One, your own personal prayerfulness, and two, the prayers of others for you. Are you with me? So there are three dimensions of prayer. Your the prayer you pray for yourself. The prayer, your spiritual aid, your fathers or mothers in the faith prays for you, and the prayer of brethren. Are you there? These three dimensions of prayer are powerful, and their functions are not the same. Now, there, there is a time in your life that the only thing that will save you is the prayer you pray for yourself by yourself. And there's another time in life that the only thing that will save you is the prayer that a father figure or a mother figure in faith prays for you. They are decreased over you. May be the only thing that will save you in that season. There are other seasons too that due to how heavy the situation around you is, you cannot even pray for yourself. In that point, the only thing that will save you is the prayer of faithful brethren so you need to understand these three dimensions of prayer are effective and their responsibilities are not the same because certain seasons you know in different seasons different dimensions of prayers will be needed are you getting what i'm saying when peter was in the prison the dimension of prayer that was needed for him to come out was the prayer of the church was the prayer of others, prayers of faithful brethren. It was not his own prayers that brought him out. The man was in the prison, he was even tired, he was waiting for death. He was not doing anything, he was just in the prison, he said, well, come and kill us. He was expecting death. But the prayer of faithful brethren brought him out from the death zone to life zone. I hope you understand. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your prayers let your requests be made known unto God. Prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. When you pray you must also learn to give thanks. Prayer is not just about telling God what you want. It's also about telling God what He has done, what He is doing, and appreciating Him for those things. Prayer should not just involve asking. It should also involve appreciation. If all you do in prayer is just asking without appreciation, then something is wrong somewhere. Are you there? So prayer should not only stop with asking, it should also involve appreciation, thanksgiving. Are you with me? Now, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in, in the same with thanksgiving. Can you see that? As you pray, you must also learn the ways of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very important. 